Let's talk about a few best practices to follow as you're building and managing your WordPress site. First, it's essential to keep your WordPress software up to date. WordPress is an open source platform with hundreds of people contributing to its development. When a security firm discovers a vulnerability in WordPress, the lead developers are notified, WordPress gets patched, and millions of websites are updated before the company makes what's called a responsible disclosure, where they release the specific details of the vulnerability that was discovered. With that disclosure, the vulnerability becomes public knowledge, meaning hackers essentially have a recipe to exploit websites that haven't yet been updated. The moral of the story, keeping your software up to date is vital for your security. So let me show you how to manage your updates in WordPress. Here in the WordPress dashboard for this particular site, you should notice that we have a few different indications that we have updates available. So at the top, there's this banner telling us we have a new version of WordPress. And then in the main menu, we've got a couple of badge icons with little numbers on them. So next to updates, it says four, and next to plugins, it says two. So what that means is we have four total updates available for this site and two of our plugins need to be updated. So pay attention to these little icons when you see them and be sure to install those updates as soon as possible. So to manage your updates, you'll click updates under the dashboard menu. And on this page, you can see all of the updates that are currently available for this site. So you can see at the top, an updated version of WordPress is available. And then we have two plugins and one theme, all of which need to be updated. So we'll start with the main WordPress update. And by the way, there is an automatic update feature. So if you see this link here that says enable automatic updates for all new versions of WordPress, you can do that to make sure you don't miss anything. Uh, but otherwise you can just go ahead and click the update button here and your site will be automatically updated to the latest available version of WordPress. Now, often it'll take you to a welcome screen that looks something like this, just giving you a rundown of any changes or improvements that have been made to WordPress in this particular version. I'm gonna go back over to the update screen so we can update our plugins. So here we have these two plugins that need to be updated. I'm gonna select all and click update plugins. Once again, very easy automatic process. And once we've done that, we can go back to the update screen again and update our theme. So I'm going to select this theme, same thing, update themes. And in just a few seconds, the theme will be updated. Now you can see those little notification icons have been cleared. And if we go back to updates, we'll see that we are fully up to date on WordPress core and our plugins and themes. My next recommendation is to use a strong password for your WordPress administrator account. The easiest way for a hacker to gain access to your site is by stealing or guessing your password. You can make that a lot more difficult by creating a strong password that's hard to guess and that you don't use on other websites. The ideal password would be a complex mix of letters, numbers, and symbols. Something like this. Now, Obviously, the reason most people don't use these kinds of strong, unique passwords is because they're hard to remember. That's why I recommend using a password manager like LastPass, which generates and stores secure passwords, not just for WordPress, but for all of your accounts, so you don't have to remember any of them. It also doesn't hurt to change your password on a fairly regular basis. I'd say every few months or so. Along the same lines, you want to be mindful of user privileges. Even if you've got your main administrator account locked down, other user accounts could still pose a risk to your site's security. Whenever you add a new WordPress user, make sure you give them an appropriate user role. The administrator role should rarely be assigned to any other account. If you give someone else an administrator account, you're giving them unfettered access to make changes to your site with the exact capabilities that you have. So they can even lock you out if they want to. If you do give someone else administrator access, like a trusted business partner, make sure you both have strong passwords and good security habits. 
Along with regular updates, it's important to exercise caution and use common sense when you're installing themes and plugins. Because themes and plugins modify and extend the functionality of your website, they can introduce unique vulnerabilities that aren't present in WordPress core. Ultimately, your website is only as secure as your least secure plugin. So before installing any theme or plugin, take a look at the reviews, see how many other sites are using it, and make sure it's being actively maintained. Beyond that, you should also limit the total number of plugins on your site. Again, there's no specific number, but in general, the fewer plugins you install, the fewer risks you take. So be careful not to go overboard. I want to recommend a free security plugin that'll do a lot of different things to protect your site from malware and other various security threats. And that plugin is WordFence. Now this is the most popular WordPress security plugin, and it's one of those plugins that I install on every new site. So I highly recommend that you do the same. So we'll go over to my test site here, go to the plugin section, click on add new. We're gonna search for WordFence. So it's gonna be this first one here, WordFence security, firewall and malware scan. We'll click install, and then we'll activate it. So right away, it's gonna ask you for an email address. Now this is important because this is where WordFence is gonna send security notifications about your website. So if anything goes wrong, if your site gets infected or hacked or anything like that, you're gonna get a notification at this email address. So make sure you put in a good email address that you actively monitor. Now, right here, they're asking if you also want to receive their newsletter to this email address. Uh, that's totally up to you. Personally, I get too many newsletters, so I'm going to say no. Then you have to agree to the terms of service and click continue. Now, here's where you can enter your premium key if you have a premium subscription to WordFence. I'm just going to use the free version, and I normally do just use the free version on most of my sites, so I'm going to hit no thanks. So WordFence has been activated, and already a lot of security measures have been implemented in the background. There's a firewall, there's protection against brute force attacks, where an attacker will uh, use a script to try to guess your password just by entering a whole bunch of different passwords one after the other. Those are going to be blocked. And by default, your website's going to be scanned for malware once a day. Now, you can also scan your website manually by going to the WordFence menu and clicking on Scan. And it's going to give you a little tour of the interface here. And if you want to, you can start your first scan right here. Now, once again, if any security issues are found, they're going to be emailed to you, but they'll also be listed down here in this table. And in a lot of cases, you can actually repair issues that it finds just by clicking a button in this table itself. So just by installing this plugin, your website is in a much better place security wise. And, you know, this combined with your good security habits is going to go a long way to protecting you from all the various threats that are out there. Now, there are a bunch of options that you can customize if you would like to, but the default settings are going to be just fine for most sites. In addition to a security scanning plugin, I would strongly encourage you to have a reliable backup solution in place as well. If anything ever happens to your website, whether it's malware or you know, something going wrong with your web host, or even just human error on your part, you're gonna to wanna to have backups that you can easily revert to so you don't end up losing data or even losing your entire website. This is the solution I recommend for most sites. It's a free plugin called Updraft Plus, and it makes it super easy to schedule automatic offsite backups that you can restore with a single click. So let's take a look at the setup process. So we'll go to Plugins, Add New, and we're going to search for Updraft Plus. It's all one word. 
And it's gonna be this first one, Updraft Plus WordPress Backup Plugin. Install now. And activate. Now it should prompt you to go ahead and set it up. So we'll click press here to start. And if you want to, you can go ahead and start your first backup now. But first I'd recommend you go over here and configure some settings. So at the top of this page, you can configure an automatic backup schedule for both your files and your database. Now, right now it's set to manual. So it's only going to back up your site when you go to that main page and click backup. But we can set this to any frequency that we want from two hours up to monthly. So this totally depends on how often you're updating your website. If you're running a business website that's not updated that often, just kind of has your business information on it, your contact info, all that kind of stuff, you're probably fine to go with a less frequent schedule. But if you're constantly updating your website, you're adding new content, blog posts, things like that, I would go a little more frequent. And if there's constantly new content coming in, say if you're running a membership site and there's like a community going on, you'll probably wanna go as frequent as every two hours. Now for me, I typically go daily with my websites. So I'm gonna choose that for both files and database. And then you can choose how many backups you'd like to retain. So again, this is up to you. I personally would like to have more than two. So I'm gonna go up to maybe five on both of these. But again, it depends on your preference and also the amount of data storage that you have at your disposal. Now, speaking of which, by default, these backups are gonna be saved to your web server where your website is stored, like right there on the same web hosting account. And that is better than nothing, but it comes with a huge risk. If anything happens to your web server or your web hosting account, you're gonna lose your backups right along with your website. So I highly recommend choosing one of these remote storage options so that you have an off-site backup as well. So there's a lot of different options here. There's Updraft Plus Vault, which is their premium backup hosting service. Uh, if you want a really seamless, easy solution, you could go with that and subscribe to one of these plans here. Or you can pick any of these other cloud storage services. So we've got like Microsoft OneDrive, Dropbox, Google Drive, you can pick any of these and your backups will be automatically stored at that location on your account. So if we choose Google Drive, for example, we can scroll down and you'll see it says after you've saved your changes by clicking save changes below, then come back here and follow this link to complete authentication with Google Drive. So make sure you save your changes first and then come back and sign in. So down here, you can configure what files are gonna be included in the backup. I recommend leaving everything. And then we'll go down and click Save Changes. So now it says you've selected a remote storage option which has an authorization step to complete. So at this point, you'll click Sign In with Google, sign in with your Google account, and then the plugin will have access to your Google Drive account and it can save your backups there. Same goes with all these other options here. Save your changes, authenticate the account, and then you're good to go. And then in the future, if you wanna create a manual backup, you can do that here. And you'll be able to see your existing backups down here and restore any of them with a single click. Thanks for checking out this video. As I mentioned at the top, this video is part of my WordPress masterclass, which I've designed to be the definitive beginner's guide to building beautiful, functional websites with WordPress. It's a comprehensive step-by-step -step course, and the goal is to get you to a level of proficiency where you feel comfortable building pretty much any type of website, from a simple blog to a complex e-commerce store, all without writing a single line of code. If you want to check it out, there's a link in the description below. Otherwise, thanks again for watching and stay tuned for more WordPress content.